Hey guys, it's AJS. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Meister 15 is back! <laughs> From the brief. <laughs> <laughs> he has he has been exploring the underground for the okay, last month, and uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, if you take a look at what I found, I found a hole. There was a torch in it, so that was useful. <laughs> Building the views. Anyway, let's get back. So uh, we're gonna do. We might do like. So I built a two-bit multiplier. Also, oh, yeah. Huh? And I was because I was bored. So it does. So it does like. You know, like a three, three times the two, and you get the six. Or, you know, it's like three times the three, getting nine. It's pretty nice. Yep, yep. And then, and then we'll start here. Be like, so. Yeah. So, we got a couple things to show you today, besides the step one of the CPU building process. If you would see here. I don't know where Sam is, but this is my 8-bit CPU I've been working on for a while. There's a topic in the forums, so I'm going to check it out. But, you know, below, here's the ALU down here. And it adds, subtracts, and, and ors, zors, xor. And then up here, we would travel upwards, is the memory, and it has four bytes of memory. And I improved my architecture. It's like Joe Meister architecture version two, and there's like five trillion functions. So it's gonna take me a while to go through all. But yeah, that's basically what I've been working on for quite a while. In fact, and here's my. Well, let's show the shift register. Right you might as well. Yeah. Okay. And over here. Yeah. Over here is what I just started working on. It's my shift register idea, and it what it does is it takes it'll take serial inputs, so like whatever basically you program this to do over here, and it will take that and put it into parallel outputs and then shift it through the register. So that's pretty interesting. It does stuff. Uh huh. There we go. If you do one, it'll shift one to the register. And take it off and go. So go, so go, so go, so go. Okay. Now let's get down to business. <laughs> okay. So well, what we gonna do? We will start what we gonna do? building the CPU. Okay. Um, done. So. First, let's just do an overall view of parts. So, the type of memory we will be using is the D flip flop. And if you don't know how a D flip flop operates, basically it has two inputs. It has a write input, a write slash store input, and a data input. And what you can do is you can input whatever into the data input. And here's I'm just going to go really quick. So yeah, I'm making the super fancy one. Ooh. But anyway, you can input it, and you can either write, and then once you write it, say I write one, I can then store it. No matter what I do, so the data function will still be one. So that's useful for storing data and such, and other things. I haven't actually seen this one before. Really? Well, very it's very popular on the RDF. Yeah. Um, it's called the uh, Basil Flop because Basil Ship made it. <laughs> um, tomato Basil Soup. But uh, Basil Flop made it. It's like just Basil made it. It uses pistols. Dude, stop. Dude, stop. Oh, that's annoying. Shut up. Um, so, so this is the data input. So. This is whatever we're writing to him. Mm -hmm. And we can activate the clock, which will save whatever the data <laughs> input is. <laughs> so then we can set that to zero. 
And so, yeah, this is a very compact, very useful uh, default plot. It's basically a one bit register. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that's what we'll be using for memory. Okay. And then, okay, so I will, another, another component we'll be using is the, is the, uh, erp. Here, Yes, we will be using that. We will be employing the flippy floppy. Gerard will probably approve. <laughs> um, this is the uh, well. Joe Meister we doesn't really be. like it. But well, I mean, it just doesn't give you an accurate view of the parts of what like a like when you build a half batter, like you, like when you build a half batter, you want to have the inputs going into an end gate and an XOR gate. And to illustrate that is kind of something I made over here, which you, where you can see the actual parts of the half adder. Yeah, but it's large. It's large and unwieldy, but this is a tutorial, not to graphics CPU time. So. Yeah, but you you want them to be able to use it. I want them to take their own designs. Um. Anyways, so this is the um, muxer. The Let's just call it a selector. Let's call it a mooksor. A mooksor. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what it does is it selects between two inputs. Um, it mooses. <laughs> yeah, basically it mooses. But um, so when this is on, it takes input from whatever this is. So that output will be whatever this is. And then when it's off, the output will be whatever this is. And so we will use that a couple of times in um, the architecture. Well, well, when we use it, it will be employed more as a multiplexer or selecting, multiple, selecting between multiple inputs. Yes. In this case, of course. Yeah, um, I'm just going to do this real quick. Then. We will have um, we will have an AOU with adders like this. This is my spread out full adder, and basically what it does is it'll take three inputs: uh, the one A, one B, and the carry. And if you string and if you string these together, which I actually I had some. Basically, if you take the carry out, which is right here, of this ZOR, and you string it into the carry end of the next adder, then whatever, you, then however many of those you have in a row is how many bits your full adder is. So right now, this is just a one bit adder. Basically. Yep. And then obviously I have my two wide adders that no. we probably will use just because it's. For the sake of compactness um, and simplicity, well, maybe not simplicity, but for the sake of compactness. But here you can see the design laid out, so that's why I like to use it, because you can see here the two inputs here go into this half adder, which is an A and the ZOR, and then the carry goes into another half adder with the ZOR output in the first, and then the two AMs. Which is actually, this is still actually what I use, so I should probably have to that. Um, yeah. So, I think we'll probably, the next thing we'll make is the um, AOU, which consists of adders, logic gates, and we will construct Ooh. something like a... Are we going to do a bit shifter? Yes. Well... I don't think we... No, we'll just do we'll just basic do add, logic, subtract, add, add, subtract, oh, and uh, XOR. For subtraction, let's let me see this real quick. For subtraction in the ALU, what you do is you slap this X, you slap a ZOR. Hey, Jim, what's up? You slap a ZOR in front of the B. Slap a ZOR. You slap a ZOR. <laughs> no, you slap a ZOR in front of the B input so you can actually add. You, you just numbers. put some D's on it. You can, you can <laughs> add negative numbers. Put some D's on it. Oh, well. Yeah. But 
it can invert the output and surprisingly in adding that works because when you turn on the carry in it's kind of like the, trying to look for on inputs and so it will be automatically on so it will turn it off kind of. what? Uh, it adds uh, negative numbers yeah what we're trying to just keep it as that it adds negative b to positive a which will give you a result as if you were subtracting b from a yes if you've done your maths and then we will do some logic um have you laid out the logic gates yet um well all we'll have to do oh i mean i hope all we'll have to do is have um, three XORs and two XORs going into yeah, right. another XOR so we can have all um, one, all, all con one. <laughs> like, I mean, all conditional, like some, con most conditional logic. Yeah. Um, it won't have XOR, like, really specific things, like only if A and B or. A and not B or something ridiculous like that. Let's, it will only have, um, yeah, but it'll be pretty simple. So, actually, with with the adder, you can extract. You can extract. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Ending you can extract and extract XOR. XOR because here all an adder is is ending and XOR. Ending and XOR. So, so take the end input from down here. And these are the input from here, the XOR. Yeah. So. In being bro, we are doing ending and XORing. Really? Um, adding, is adding and subtracting by is probably my favorite part of the rest of the time. So. Really? Yeah. For I don't game. know why. <laughs> I answer that for you. But it's just seeing something that actually works. Like when I show my friends Redstone, it's not like, hey, look, I can store stuff. Like I mean, storing things. Too. Cool. Yeah, storing things. Cool. Not really. Shit. <laughs> okay. Nailed it. So, oh, also, we should discuss 8 bit conceptual. Um. Probably. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, maybe uh, uh, we'll probably post another video discussing that. So. Well, I think we, we said that in the form. So. Uh, no, we didn't. We didn't post that in the form. Yeah, we did. No, we didn't. We totes did. The conceptual. We totes did. The conceptual. Well, I, I, I wasn't part we of that. We did. We should totally make... Oh, well, we put that under our project. Yeah. But we didn't actually make it. Yeah. Topic. We should make a topic. For it. Nah. Why not? Ain't like that. We just like that. Okay. We're, we're taking suggestions for what you want to include. So, if you and have yeah, anything yeah. about the computer that you want us to do, then we do it. Oh, by the way, I'm making Tetris. Yeah, but Joe Meister 15 I, I don't approve. So, <laughs> you may be directed to this video I'm sorry, I'm after just... you watch the test, the Tetris video. The Tetris video. video. The testosterone video. Possibly. <laughs> Why did you replace my torches with levers? So, let me be. <laughs> okay, this is a video. <laughs> this is a video, bye. Okay, thanks, bye. We're gonna go.